it. Al's Peeps here. Thanks for dropping in today. Uh, I've got a few additions to show you for the left field sets. Uh, but before we get started, I want to just uh, thank the community. I've had a handful of shout outs uh, in the recent uh, weeks here, and I really appreciate it. Um, it's, you know, I don't expect it, and um, I just want to say thank you. Um, it actually uh, got over 300 subs, which is not something I'm not sub driven. But uh, that is, uh, you know, something I didn't, honestly, I didn't think would ever happen. And I appreciate anyone who comes through here and spends some time uh, on this channel. And, you know, leaves comments and starts discussions. It's, it's all great. And it's what it's all about. So I really appreciate it. I want to thank you for that. Um, and... Stick around and I'm gonna do a little giveaway uh, in relation to kind of like what I collect. And um, anyway, stick around and I'll give the details. Uh, but first of all, I wanna show you some additions to the left field sets. These are some cards I've shown before uh, out here. And uh, to sort of set the table for the additions. Now, interestingly, one of the cards I'd like to show is one I just overlooked in the last Left Field Sets episode, and that is this one here. It is from the 1949 Remar Bread issue. Uh, I picked up a handful of these. It's how I acquired the Artie Wilson and the Alonzo Perry. And um, upon doing other research on Sabre and, and some other websites, uh, Sabre being the Society for American Baseball Research. Um, I ran across this name and it rang a bell. And I quickly put it together that uh, this gentleman uh, fits my collecting focus. And I just didn't even realize it, just passed it right over. And it was included in that bundle of Remar bread cards. Anyway, Parnell Woods here played in the Negro Leagues. I was unaware, uh, and this 1949 Remar Bread issue represents uh, Parnell Woody Woods. Woody was his nickname. Uh, his last season as a professional baseball player. So he just gets in. Uh, this is the only card of Parnell Woods that I know of. And um, it just, it, it was a great discovery. And I, you know, it was kind of one, one of those times where I was like, wait a minute. I just flipped through uh, a little stack of cards and I thought I saw Parnell Woods. Woody. Um, so I did some research, further digging. There isn't a whole lot of information on Parnell, uh, which is not unusual. Um, but what I did dig up was that he played in the Negro Leagues from 1937 to 1945. Uh, was a perennial all-star five or six times, I want to say. Um, played for the Birmingham Black Barons and the Cleveland Buckeyes. Won the Negro Leagues World Series in 45 with the Cleveland Buckeyes. Uh, he was a third baseman and... Um, Ended up with the Oakland Oaks in 1949 and in his last uh, year of professional baseball. So this is a really cool discovery. I was very psyched uh, that this came to light. So we're gonna put Parnell over here. So that's uh, interestingly four, four former Negro League players in that Remar Bread Oakland Oaks issue from 1949. I just think that's super cool. And I got my ComC box recently, which is very exciting. Of course, with the ComC box, you get the uh, ComC crumple. And we've got a 61 post perforated to add to the Elston Howard and the Roger Maris, uh, we've got the Mini Minoso. The 
Perforateds are also referred to as company cards. So the perforateds, I think I've mentioned this before, you would send off um, uh, the UPC from whatever product you were getting from post, the cereal boxes. I don't know how many you had to collect and send off, but then with enough of them, you could get, um, I believe you could get a whole team. So if your team was the White Sox, you'd end up with a sheet of White Sox, which then you could separate yourself for your collection. Thus the perforations there that you kind of see. I don't know if you can see that at the bottom. Anyway, this was a very nice looking copy. Uh, Minnie Minoso, who of course also played in the Negro Leagues. In fact, um, Minnie Minoso played for the New York Cubans. And uh, let's see, is there gonna be, well, there's gonna be some overlap here. Uh, Minoso plays for the, uh, played for the New York Cubans. And the next guy we're going to look at also played for the New York Cubans. But anyway, I was psyched to get that off Com C. It was very reasonable. It's kind of, uh, the perforateds go for quite a bit more, uh, especially if they're still showing the perforations and are in kind of solid original condition, if you will. Um, so I think that Minoso might have been like eight or ten bucks, something like that. All right, for this last addition to left field sets, I want to give a special shout out to a few YouTubers that uh, inspired me and gave me some knowledge around this particular set. Uh, that would be Orlando from A Collector's Dream, Paul and Leah at Fast Breaks and Breakfast, John Mangini. I'm sure there's others that I ran across, but those three uh, really stand out in terms of this set and sort of providing me with an, some initial knowledge of the set and then giving me uh, the inspiration to dig in. So without further ado, here is my first left field, uh, first card in this left field set. The 1945-46 Caramello Deportivo. This one is card number 83. It is Hector Rodriguez. Now there were two Caramello Deportivo sets. There was one in 45-46 and one in 46-47. The 46-47s are a little bit more scarce. Um, the 45-46 set has some really heavy hitters. Um, Mini Minoso, uh, it's got the Martin DeHigo, it's got the Ray Dandridge. One that I'd love to uh, acquire one at some point maybe would be the Louis Tiant Sr. That would be really cool. Um, but I, uh, I actually missed on one of these Hector Rodriguez's about a year ago. And um, I was kind of kicking myself and then this one turned up, and this one was actually quite affordable, more affordable than the first copy I ran across back then. Um, you can see it's, you know, it's not in great shakes, but um, that's not what I expect out of this set. Um, I feel lucky enough just to be able to add this one. Anyway, thanks to those YouTubers who inspired me to uh, dig into this set. Here's the back of this one can see that it's stained from the glue that was used. Now you can read all the text though, which is cool. And why did I go after Hector Rodriguez? Well, heck, first of all, these Carmelo Deportivos, they're a, obviously a Cuban issue uh, for two seasons. That It was a winter league, the Cuban Winter Ball League. And a lot of the major leaguers, not, well, I shouldn't say a lot of the major leaguers, but some uh, major leaguers and otherwise would go down there and play in the winter, of course. Uh, you know, uh, playing baseball was a job as much as anything else back then. So these guys, like Hector, would bounce around Mexico and other parts of the Caribbean, up into Canada, in the International League, the PCL, uh, when they weren't in the major leagues or if they weren't able to be in the major leagues. So 
So I digress. Um, Hector Rodriguez did make the major leagues. Uh, he played one full season with the White Sox in 1952. He finally got his crack at it at age 31. And um, it's interesting, he played for the New York Cubans in 1939 and 44. Uh, Minnie Minoso also played for the New York Cubans, but they would not have crossed paths because uh, Minoso didn't start with the Cubans, I don't think, until 1946. So, but they might, they might have crossed paths. Um, no, I don't think they would have crossed paths in the PCL because I don't think Hector Rodriguez actually played in the PCL. I think he played just in the International League up in Canada. Anyway, so Hector Rodriguez got his chance with the White Sox, played a full season. Uh, it was his only season in the majors. Um, he did finish his major league career with one home run. Uh, got 462 plate appearances and did receive a Major League Baseball card, which I'll show you. It is not part of the left field sets, but here it is. You might be familiar. It is the 1953 Bowman Color, Hector Rodriguez. So he got his baseball card. I love this baseball card. Here's the back. And I'll go along really nicely with the new Caramello Deportivo number 83, Hector Rodriguez. So as I mentioned before, I would like to do a little giveaway. Never done one. I'd like to show uh, my thanks uh, to all the people who come by and um, and maybe I can talk a little bit about what's in the background here that often gets uh, overlooked because mostly I'm using it as a prop for other cards. But this box here is something I call the bridge box. And, um, well, let's take a quick look because what I'd like to do is offer up a little giveaway. First, we'll take a little flip. What is the bridge box? Um... I've been collecting cards of the bridge players for a handful of years now, and um, and they end up in this box. Uh, the non-Hall of Famers, anyway, end up in this box. And I'll just flip through them just to give you a quick peek at some uh, some of these and who these gentlemen were. Got the '59 Frank Herrera, Pancho. We got Lou Johnson. By the way, uh, Pepino Man mentioned uh, Frank Herrera. Really interesting story in uh, one of his episodes recently. Anyway, Lou Johnson also played with the Dodgers. We got Sam Jones, 58. Nice 57, Elston Howard. Chuck Harmon, Dave Pope. Ike Brown, later. Uh, Barn he was uh, in the knee relieves, but it was a barnstorming team at that point. Uh, George Crow, uh, Mr. Basketball, the very first Mr. Basketball in Indiana. Uh, Josie Hurd, Gene Baker, Lou Geister, Billy Harrell, another Lou Johnson. And, you know, it kind of goes on and on. I've been picking these up uh, for years now um, when I see a nice copy. Um, I can generally find these for just a couple bucks. Uh, the Minoso wasn't a couple bucks, but I don't think it was that much. It's kind of a classic Minoso too. This, although this is not supposed to be in the box because he's a Hall of Famer now. But anyway, Henry Thompson, Hank Thompson, super interesting story. Uh, broke the uh, well, broke uh, the Giants barrier, the New York Giants, uh, along with Monty Irvin, was uh, on the very same day they uh, were the first two black players for the New York Giants. Kurt Roberts broke in for the Pirates. 
John Wyatt, a later bridge player. But anyway, I don't, I don't need to go through the whole box uh, to give you the gist. But what I want to do is um, put these back in here for now. I'll leave a couple on the outside just to just for show. Get Kurt up there, Hank. Um, what I would like to do is if you comment below, give me the name of your favorite non Hall of Fame bridge player or barrier breaker. Um, I'll keep it open, but the non Hall of Fame bridge player might be the easiest. Uh, let me know who that is in the comments below, and uh, I will look at the comments and put in an entry for each of you who comment. Um, and we'll make the deadline the end, the last day in September. And then what I'd like to do is I will mail you a little mini collection out of the bridge box. And I'll try to curate it for you, you know, depending on who the winner is. Um, anyway, I hope that's of interest to you. And uh, again, I just appreciate all of you who take the time to swing in and uh, that's all I got. Thanks for coming by. We'll see you next time.